Hey there, let me introduce you to my bike. And no, it's not a kid's bike, despite those small wheels. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, but there's been one thing bugging me for a while now, something simple, maybe too simple, something that could be upgraded to truly do justice to my bike's beauty. Yep, it's the chainring. In this video, I'm taking you through every step of how I designed this chainring from scratch. We'll cover everything, the specs, checking out the competition, picking the perfect design, building a fully parametric 3D model, prototyping, CNC machining, and finally, testing it out in the real world. Ready? Let's dive in. Every project starts with a plan, a set of guidelines that sets the stage. Our journey begins by picking the material for our chain ring. For this project, it's an easy call. We're going with an aluminum alloy. Now, when it comes to alloys, there's a whole world of options out there. To keep things simple, we've narrowed it down to two of the most popular ones in the cycling world, the 6061 T6 and the 7075 T6. I won't bore you with a long comparison, don't worry. I've got a handy chart ready to break it down for you. In a nutshell, the 7075 T6 stands out. It's stronger, less likely to bend or warp, and built to last. The catch? It's a bit pricier and trickier to machine. But since our goal is to craft a chainring that'll go the distance, 7,075 T6 is our way to go. Next, we need to ensure everything connecting to the chainring fits just right. Like the crankset, for example. I've carefully measured where the chainring sits on it, along with the inserts and bolts that hold everything in place. To nail this, you've got to know the right standard. Major brands like Shimano or Box stick to the BCD 104 standard. To make things easier, I've put together a diagram showing all the key measurements I'll need to follow when designing the chainring. If I stick to these values, the chainring will fit onto the system like a glove. Another key factor to consider is the chain I'll be using. I need to make sure both parts mesh perfectly. The standard I'm working with is 1 half by 3 30 seconds inch. Before wrapping up with a summary of the specs, I'm going to take a closer look at the various chain rings I've collected over the years. I'll study their designs and check their weights to get a sense of the target weight I should aim for. The weights range from 100 to 113 grams, depending on the model. Most designs are pretty basic and straightforward, except for the box and Renin chain rings, which have a bit more polish. That's where I see an opportunity to stand out. I'll need to focus on crafting a design that's a step above. I've also noticed that some of these chain rings have taken a beating over time with bent or damaged teeth. That's another key point I'll need to tackle to make sure my design avoids those issues. So let's sum up the specifications. I need to create a chain ring that's CNC machined from 7,075 aluminum alloy. The design should be flexible enough to easily adjust for 40 to 50 teeth and I'll need to take extra care during the CAD stage to ensure a consistent design across every size. It's got to have a standout look to set it apart. Weight-wise, I'm aiming for 100 to 110 grams to stay competitive with other products out there. And I'll need to pay special attention to the teeth, making sure they're built to last over time. I think I've got everything I need to dive into the design process. Now, a big part of the work is moving to the computer. I'll be using my go-to CAD software, FreeCAD, to sketch out the first design. When I don't have a clear picture in mind yet, I like to start simple and build it up step by step. I worked on a second design, a touch more daring, but still a long way from what I'm aiming for. My third attempt got a bit more creative, though. Let's be honest, it looks a lot like a fan grill. Plus, that kind of design felt tricky to make parametric for all chain ring sizes. My fourth design is finally starting to feel right closer to what I had in mind. It's got a robust, well thought out look with some serious attention to detail. I went with a honeycomb pattern to increase the chain ring's rigidity, though I think the honeycomb's thickness might be a bit much. They say third time's the charm, but for me, it took a fifth try. I dialed back the honeycomb's thickness and added a chamfer on the inner edge to give it a sleeker, more refined look. I'm really happy with this final design. I think it's going to make for a beautifully machined piece that'll really pop once it's mounted on the bike. I broke down the creation into three steps. First, I modeled the teeth, driven by a variable for the number of teeth. Second, I tackled the honeycomb pattern, which adjusts based on the number of teeth to set the outer diameter. And third, I designed the mounting area where the chainring connects to the crankset. This part stays fixed and consistent across all sizes. To make my life easier, I created a spreadsheet that lets me control all of the key parameters of the 3D model. 
It allows me to tweak dimensions on the fly, like the number of teeth, which automatically recalculates the diameter and adjusts the honeycomb pattern. I can also fine tune the thickness or adapt the teeth to match the chain standard. There's a lot I could say about this 3D model, like how I built a variable driven honeycomb pattern generator to adjust all its parameters. But I think the most interesting part is explaining how I calculated the chain ring's diameter based on the number of teeth and the chain standard. I use the well-known pitch circle diameter formula, which helps figure out the diameter of the circle that surrounds a polygon. Because, believe it or not, a chain ring is more like a polygon than a perfect circle. I'm not going to walk you through every single step of the modeling process. That'd take a while. Instead, let me give you the big picture. After setting up my variables, I started with a master sketch that laid out all of the key dimensions, the outer diameter, the shape of the teeth, and the placement of the mounting holes. From there, I built the design step by step, combining extrusions, chamfers, pockets, and polar arrays to shape the final form. I think my project is ready for the prototyping process. I've got my old trusty CR-10S, which has been with me for quite a while now. It's been a faithful companion through tons of projects over the years, but it's starting to show its age. Obviously, I tried printing my prototype on it, but as you can see, the results weren't exactly impressive. On top of that, my prototype needs to be really precise to check if the design fits the crankset and chain properly. So for just six bucks, I figured it was a no-brainer to go with PCBWay instead. I stuck with their default settings. I wanted a smooth, white, and precise model. All I had to do was upload my step file, and that was it. As you can see, the 3D print came out with exceptional quality and precision, miles ahead of anything I could have gotten from my CR-10. For that price, it's honestly an absolute steal. I checked the dimensions, everything looked good. So I rushed to mount it on the crankset. It's always an exciting yet stressful moment. You can see the project coming together, but it's also nerve wracking. If the parts don't fit, it means going back to the modeling stage, which would delay the whole project. Thankfully, everything came together perfectly. The chain ring's holes lined up flawlessly with the crankset. The chain mesh just right. Things are looking good for the final CNC reveal. A huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this project. They took care of all the CNC machining with a great expertise. I simply uploaded my 3D file, selected the 7075 alloy, and chose a premium anodized gold finish, leaving the default settings for the rest. I'm genuinely amazed by the outstanding quality of the machining and the finish. Words often fall short of capturing it, so let the images speak for themselves. Enjoy! Now comes the stage of testing the chain ring in action. This is truly the final step to validate my design and its functionality. I'll leave you with a few images of the testing process before the final conclusion. I think I nailed it. Met all my goals from the start. This chain ring looks stunning. It's way more refined and premium than my sample collection. Regarding the weight, only 97 grams, below my target. I'm thrilled with how this project turned out. Tempted to frame it and hang it on the wall. Just kidding, let me know what you think in the comments. I tried a new video style here. I wanted to show every step of designing a product, start to finish. I hope you enjoyed this format, or at least got entertained. Thanks for your attention.